While studying sports psychology and child development at the University of Minnesota, sometimes I'd close up my laptop and look around at my office mates and say, screw it dude, let's go bowling. In addition to the opportunity to make a Big Lebowski reference, they had this deal at the student center where he got lunch and two games of bowling for $5. So no matter how cold it was, I would walk across campus a few times a week and get some fresh air, eat some really unnutritious food, and knock down some bowling pins. And while all the bratwursts probably did irreparable harm to my body, all the bowling helped my brain develop in some very enduring ways. We have lots of cells in our bodies, and some of them, like muscle cells and neurons, are excitable cells. And when excitable cells get excited, it's called an action potential. For muscles, the action potential initiates a chain of events that leads to muscle contraction. And when action potentials occur in neurons, the neuron is said to fire. When neurons fire, they can send messages to tell muscles to fire, and this process which I summarized in really simplistic terms, explains how people are able to walk and talk and throw a ball. Every repeatable motor skill that you are capable of performing is associated with a neural circuit in your brain made up of a chain of neurons. But performing a complex motor skill like hitting a baseball that's curving away from you at 88 miles per hour requires neural pathways that have been sufficiently myelinated. Myelin was discovered by Rudolf Virchow, a German physician, politician, and Renaissance man in 1854. But the importance of myelin to thinking, learning, and performing has only been discovered much more recently. Myelin, by the way, is mostly fat and cholesterol. So the next time someone says, hey, fathead, take it as a compliment. It means you're smart. And it also means that all those bratwursts, they're up here in my noodle, insulating those bowling neurons. Each time a neural circuit is fired, your brain increases the thickness of the myelin sheaths around the neural circuitry. When the myelin sheath around the neural circuitry becomes thicker, you become better able to perform the associated movements more precisely and more consistently because the neural circuitry operates more efficiently. So myelin is a really good thing if you want to get good at something. Think of myelin and neurons being a bit like copper speaker wire and its plastic sheath. If you're an audiophile and you want really good sound from your surround sound system, you need wire that is capable of sending an electrical signal from the receiver to the speakers often through walls and ceilings, without a signal loss or interference from the 60 cycle noise coming from your other electronics. Experienced home theater geeks know that the 24 gauge wire that comes with your speakers just simply isn't gonna get the job done. You need something thicker, a whole bunch of copper strands surrounded by a thick plastic shield. Myelin helps electrical signals move faster through the neural circuit. And just like thicker speaker wire, myelin helps keep electrical signals from escaping from the neural circuit. So let me show you an example of one of the ways that my brain is myelinated. I'm here at Blunswick Lane, beautiful Glenwood, Washington. I haven't bowled in two or three years, so we'll see how this goes.
You could probably tell that that wasn't my first time bowling, which explains why I was able to bowl better than the average birthday party attendee. But it was the first time I'd bowled in two or three years, which helps explain why I didn't bowl better. You see, although myelin becomes thicker throughout a neural circuit when the neural circuit is fired, myelin can deteriorate somewhat over time. It is to some extent a use it or lose it sort of thing. So although my brain still has myelinated neural pathways that are associated with the bowling motion, but also given that I haven't fired those neurons in quite some time, I didn't bowl as well as I probably would have several years ago. If you're familiar with bowling and if you paid attention to the video, you could probably tell by my motion and the trajectory of the ball that there was certainly room for improvement. My arm motion and leg kick were inconsistent and I kept missing my pocket. Right-handed bowlers want to hit the pocket between the one pin and the three pin, but I kept getting Brooklyn strikes by hitting the one-two pocket, which is the bowling equivalent of banking a three-point shot. The result is good, but everyone knows it's not quite what you meant to do. Speaking of things we mean to do, when people mean to develop a talent, they usually do. I remember an interview with Brad Paisley a few years ago when he lamented the fact that playing Guitar Hero was so popular with children and adolescents, but learning to play an actual guitar wasn't. He was bewildered by the decisions that kids were making and said something like, getting good at Guitar Hero isn't going to get you dates when you're older. In a sense, what Brad Paisley was actually saying is that kids are myelinating the wrong neural pathways. They're myelinating pathways that are useful for the year that a particular edition of Guitar Hero or Madden 2000 whatever is popular, but they're basically useless after the games have fallen out of favor. Nobody impresses their friends with their sweet Mike Tyson's punch-out skills, unless their friends happen to be hipsters in ironic t-shirts. Myelin is key to skill learning and performance. And if you want to learn more about the role of myelin in talent development and aren't ready for esoteric articles and scholarly journals, I highly recommend reading The Talent Code by Daniel Cole. Cole explains that to develop talent, you need to create and myelinate neural pathways. And to myelinate these pathways, you need to fire those neurons. And to fire those neurons, you need to get your reps in, making sure that the practice is precise and intentional. 10,000 hours of intentional practice, in fact, because myelin will only build around neurons that are fired. The process by which neural pathways become myelinated in response to neurons firing provides evidence that John Wooden was not mistaken when he playfully said that there are not four, but eight laws of learning. Explanation, demonstration, imitation, repetition, 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 and repetition. If I wanted to get back to the point where I could consistently bowl in the 200s, I would need to spend more time in the bowling alley practicing. But to be honest, that probably isn't going to happen. Because as someone once said, billiards played well is a sign of a cultured life but billiards played too well is a sign of a wasted life.